Hello, my name is Austin Habish, the founder of Think Catholic, your source for Catholic thought with both depth and devotion, and I'd like to thank you for joining us. Joining me is Claire Nowak as we complete today our series on comparative religions with special guest Christina Srinivasan on her journey from Hinduism to Christ. But first, the Catholic thought on the topic. And this thought comes to us from Nostra Aetate, which reads, From ancient times down to the present, there is found among various peoples a certain perception of that hidden power which hovers over the course of things and over the events of human history. At times, some indeed have come to the recognition of a supreme being. Thus, in Hinduism, men contemplate the divine mystery and express it through an inexhaustible abundance of myths and through searching philosophical inquiry. They seek freedom from the anguish of our human condition, either through ascetical practices or profound meditation or a flight to God with love and trust. And as a witness of from the recognition of a supreme being to the saving faith in the triune God and the Word made flesh, Claire, would you like to introduce our guest? Of course. It is my great honor and privilege to introduce Christina Srinivasan. Um, she comes from Tamil Nadu, which is in southern India, and was born of a traditional Tanjabha family. She's acted in around 100 South Indian movies as the main lead, beginning at the age of 13. She is an award-winning actress and now an internationally known Catholic speaker, wife, and mother. We are very excited to hear her story from Hinduism to the Catholic faith. Thank you, Christina, for joining us. Thank you so much, Claire. Thank you so much, Austin, for asking me to come and participate uh, in your show. It's always a great joy to share who the Lord is and how I met the Lord. You know, it's like a love story. It feels like one. It is one. So I come from a Hindu Brahmin family. And Brahmins, uh, the, the word Brahmin come from the word Brahma. Brahma is the, uh, is the word we use for creator. And the Brahmins are supposed to be uh, the people who know Brahma, the creator. The people who know the creator. The people who belong to the creator. And the Brahmins are the priestly caste of Hinduism, you know, uh, like the Levites in Jewish community. And we have been generations after generations after generations after Brahmins. In fact, I can go back and say who my first ancestor was. And we do have the, just like the 12 tribes, we have the 12 names in Brahmin community. And I belong to one of them. Um, and we have been trained in all the Vedas, in all the hymns, in the beautiful hymns in uh, Hinduism. And it is very true when Austin said, from one supreme being, uh, I was given the grace to narrow it down to his name. So from knowing God as a supreme being, today I know God in first name basis. He's my best friend. He's my divine bridegroom. He's my father who I came to know very, 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 very late, just like St. Augustine. When I was 30 years old, I met my true God, my true Lord, my true master, my true friend, my true divine bridegroom, and my true creator. I was a very happy-go, lucky Hindu girl, and uh, I started acting in movies when I was 13. Uh, I remember starting my career on my ninth grade annual holiday. I did my first movie as the main lead, and that movie was a big hit. And there were movies after movies which were offered to me. And everything was beautiful. Everything went on well. And I was able to do movies after movies. And I, mine was a arranged marriage. I really liked this guy. My mom and dad liked him more. His mom and dad liked me more. So our marriage was arranged by our parents, and we got married. I got married at the right age as far as India is concerned, right? I was married when I was 22. And I got a first son when I was 23. So everything was happening like clockwork. No problem whatsoever in any area of my life. And when I got the first son, you know, the whole world seemed to be a different place. I was a very happy mom. I took a break from my acting. And we were here in the U.S. for a short stint because um, Bharat was, offered a job to be in Washington, D.C. So my uh, 
my stay in the U.S. started in turbulent times. We were here in 2011. Sorry, we were here in 2001, August, and then 9/11 happened. The anthrax happened. Sniper attack happened. From there, I feel it was a continuity of incidents in my life. And I went back to India because I was very depressed. I was very anxious. I thought maybe it's a different country, different culture. So I would like to go back to India. And when I get back to India, I'm going to be just fine. But life sometimes surprises you. It's not what you think. It's not what you want. It's not what you desire. Sometimes it isn't even what you work hard for. It offers you a totally different thing that you are not prepared. My depression continued, my anxiety continued, and uh, I was pregnant with our second child um, in the midst of all these things, and I had severe backache. I was diagnosed with uh, cervical spondylosis and lumbar degradation. So they said my body is not okay to, to carry this baby, and Hinduism does teach you many wonderful things. But as the beautiful Catholic Church says, every religion has only the partial truth. The only religion which has a complete truth is Christianity, because truth itself formed this religion. So I wasn't told that um, life begins at conception. We aborted that baby, and after that, it is almost you know I can I can mark the progress. My depression continued. My anxiety continued. It became worse. I started becoming suicidal. We started storming different doctors. We started storming different psychiatrists. We started storming different therapists. But every one of them cleared me clinically. They said they don't understand. I seem to be absolutely fine clinically. And I was a very, very uh, believing, practicing Hindu Brahmin girl. I have always fasted on Fridays and Tuesdays. I have always done all my worshiping, my hymns, and everything up to the point of perfection. So I didn't know what this was. And when I was trying to figure out what is going on in my life, I was told that the planetary positions was not okay. That my karma is not okay. Karma is a very fashionable word right now to use. We name beautiful cafes karma we name beautiful bars nirvana without understanding the meaning right without knowing the source of it the origin of it karma means action so however you act today you're going to reap it tomorrow is, is basically the meaning and hinduism speaks about three different karmas it is not just one simple karma it's three different karmas the one which your forefathers did, the one which you did in your last birth, and the one which you are doing now. And in this, I didn't know how I merited so much of sadness, so much of depression, and why I wanted to die when life was still offering me so much that I could live for and I could continue to live for. And I was storming temple after temple, idol after idol. And all that the astrologers said, wear green ring, wear pink dress, go to this temple, go to that temple, offer this worship, offer that hymn. I was doing every single thing without any effect. And there came a point I told myself, I need to stop this. This isn't making any sense. Just like how my depression doesn't make any sense. Nothing of this is making any sense because I'm not seeing the light. I'm not seeing the end of the tunnel. I feel I'm burying myself as I'm trying to come out. The more I try to come out, the more I'm burying myself. It felt like a quicksand. And when I told myself I need to stop, I felt this urge in my heart. There should be some source out there which can truly help me come out of this entirely, skate free that I don't have to be so hurt. And I did absolutely know in my heart that I lived a life of integrity. I lived a life of honesty. And I did try to help people. And I was sincere to my marriage. Uh, but I did not understand why I have to go through all these things, why I was constantly thinking about dying while I need to live for my wonderful son, wonderful husband, and his love and his care for me. So while I was trying to figure out all these things, one thing was absolutely clear to me. 
that there is help out there. There is help for depression. There is help for anxiety. There is help for feeling suicidal. God did not create us and just leave it at lurch. That isn't God. And I knew there was a God. I knew there was a creator. Otherwise, we will not have these beautiful things all around us. The magnanimity of mountains just cannot be tectonic plates. The period when the tectonic plates should work, the period that it shouldn't work, the seasons, the colors, the trees, the flowers, everything had a reason. Everything was programmed by a great, wonderful creator who loved us to the core. I just knew it in my heart and I decided to go search. I decided to go look for him. I did not know the moment I decided to look for him, Jesus was already out there and knew his plan was working. That when he was looking out for me, I had caught the hint. I had caught that light and I was beginning to follow him. I have various scriptures of various offshoots in Hinduism, like the Buddhism, Jainism, and various scriptures in Hinduism, Ramayana. I decided to read these various scriptures just to see what Hinduism has to offer. What can I learn? What can I know? What am I missing? What am I to follow? What am I not following? I really couldn't find anything useful to me at all for my situation, for my pain, for my agony, for my puzzle, for me to get out of the darkness. And every book practically told me, you have to go through what you're going through. You have to go through the consequence of your sin. There is nothing that can pull you out completely. Whether you repent or you don't repent, you need to face the consequence. And somehow it did not sit right in my heart at all. I believe when human beings can value a sorry, human beings can understand another human being's repentance. The great, wonderful God out there will understand and should understand that I'm repenting if I had done something wrong, if I go and say sorry, that I had to be pulled out of that pain, of that consequence of that sin, or it has to, it, 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 it has to make sense, was what I was thinking back then. And slowly I started reading other religion. I read Quran. I wanted to uh, learn about Guru Granth Sahib of the Sikhs. It's almost also a mix of both Quran and uh, Hindu scriptures, or it can be called as offshoot of Hinduism. It's practiced very much in India. It's a beautiful religion where people go out of their way to help others. But I found people who helped other people. I wanted to find God who helped this creature. And I couldn't find in any of these religions. And I just waited out there. And I remember, I used to keep crying, crying and crying. And that's the way I slept. My eyes would become very tired and I would just sleep. And I would wake up just to find myself crying again. I didn't know what was this dark force which was encircling me and making it very, very difficult for me to emerge out of it, to break through for a freedom. I didn't know what was my shackle's name. Later I knew the shackle's name was black magic, was occult. I was a person who never believed in evil. I believed evil existed in Harry Potter and Evil Dead and just in the movies in the books, in the novels. I never believed in any of those things. There was this very interesting moment in my life where my friend suggested uh, a fortune teller in Hinduism. He came and he told me somebody had done some black magic to me and it was too late for me to be saved. If anybody could save me, only God could save me. It was very interesting. He did not use any name which I was already introduced to in Hinduism as gods and goddesses. He just said, only God can save you. And that made me think, why is he not mentioning Rama can save you, Krishna can save you, Kali can save you, Murga can save you. He did not mention any anything by name. And that was very puzzling. And I was telling him, if you want more money, you can just tell me because I don't believe in all these things. 
and he was very very sensitive to my comment and he said madam i am not doing this for money this is what is happening in your life somebody had done black magic to you that you should kill yourself or you should go mad that you should be you shouldn't even be existing in this world and somebody has done this from your husband's family which was another shock to me so i stopped everything i stopped worshiping i stopped going to temples because nothing was helping me it was only creating more anxiety in me and i started meditating hinduism teaches that you need to look god within you it doesn't teach god is beyond and when hinduism tells you that you need to search god within you somehow i feel it limits you it limits to your understanding yet there is a god who says my understanding is not your understanding my thoughts are not your thoughts he is huge and he was humongous he was magnanimous he was filled with mercy and he was there waiting for me all along once i remember crying in when i was doing my meditation my meditation was not methodical meditation my meditation was just closing my eyes and crying out from my heart crying out from my whole being god i know that you exist where are you who are you are you a goddess are you a god do you have a name do you have a face do you have a religion you have to show yourself to me because i am your creature i know that i had to be created by this wonderful wonderful god the powerful god i know that god has a name called almighty and almighty means he's more mightier than any situation in my life anything that i think is bigger than me i just sh- used to shut my eyes and i was calling him from deep within my heart what i did not know is that he was a god of my right hand and he was always there in front of me he had never left me nor forsaken me but alas i don't know his name i didn't know his name i didn't know who he was i kept crying i kept crying there was this beautiful house help that i used to have she had a bible and she was a protestant christian and i borrowed her bible because i just knew that the bible was a book of stories i did not know it was word of god i borrowed her bible because i wanted to sleep for me to sleep it was a humongous task i needed to read my eyes needed to get tired for me to sleep a little otherwise i used to have nightmares i used to have bad dreams and i used to get up screeching sh- shrieking screaming and when i asked her for the book she said uh, akka this is word of god i said yes for you for me it's a story book can i i will return it back to you say can you just lend it to me for a few hours the word of god is so powerful it's a two edged sword it can separate the bone from marrow and the soul from the spirit it started separating me from the darkness it started separating me from the occult it started separating me from the black magic and the demons that were sent after me to take my life they couldn't take my life because the life giver the lord and the giver of life the holy spirit started approaching me the minute i held the bible that's the power of the word of god that's what the catholic church teaches and that is the truth i started reading the book of genesis and at some point i fell asleep and i started waking up in my soul i started waking up in my spirit i started waking up to this new real genuine reality of being a child of god of being made into the image and likeness of a god who loves you more than anything who calls each and every one of us human beings the crown of his creation i saw this beautiful dream it was flooding everywhere and i was stranded in a very very small little piece of land which i can't even call an island it was tiny and the waters were rising and any moment i was to be drowned i was going to be drowned and i was just stranded there no family no friends no home no money no fame nothing what i thought was important on this earth was there with me then and i looked at this waters and i remember thinking very clearly this is karma these are the sins of people and it engulfs you it takes out your life when you least expect it if someone comes and saves me from this 
that will be my God. And I said that because even at that point, I didn't know if it was a he or she. I didn't have any name. I didn't have any source to call. And I remember looking at me, uh, looking uh, diagonally opposite from where I was standing, because I felt somebody was looking at me. You know, this feeling that when someone is looking at you, you know they are looking at you. I remember turning diagonally opposite to me there. This beautiful being stood. Light as this being and this being had this light. I saw his face. I saw how tall he was. I saw this beautiful shoulder length hair. I just felt instantly, immediately comforted. I still experience the same comfort in, in front of the Blessed Sacrament, in front of the Holy Catholic Church. When the Holy Mass is being held, I experience the same presence every single time. That presence is like a mother's womb, is like a safety net, which was assured to me the moment I was created in my conception. Until I die, I know that there is this comfort in every single Catholic parish all over this world. And I remember this beautiful smile in his face, beautiful beard. Beauty is a is the most least word I can I can say I can refer to. Comforting is the most least word I can refer to. Security is the most least word I can refer to. It was more than all these things put together, hundred times, thousand times, infinite times more when I stood in front of my Lord and God. I didn't know who he was till at that time. And I remember thinking, is he going to save me? Then he's going to be my God. And I remember him smiling at this thought. And I was thinking, does he read my thoughts? And then I saw him pointing with his beautiful little fingers to me and turning to his right and trying to say something to this another human being. He was not dressed as, as this, this person. He was dressed very differently, like a tribal, like a forest guy. And then he turned again furthermore to his right, almost to his back, and pointed out to a floating structure, which I understood that it must be some kind of boat because it was completely um, in a different shape and size, and it was floating in water. And I knew that he was asking this person to take me into the boat. And my five, six-year-old first son came and woke me up. And I remember being mesmerized. And my dear brothers and sisters, I'm still mesmerized. The Lord doesn't stop sweeping me off my feet every single day at the Holy Mass. He doesn't stop to remind me there is always a plan for me, for my safety, for my victory, for my success, for my healing, for my unity with this Holy Trinity. There was always a plan. There is always a plan for each and every one of us. And I didn't know who this was. And I went and I told this house help, Indra. Indra, I saw this dream and this is how he was dressed. And she started crying. She said, Akka, that is Jesus. And I was surprised. And I have this question, why is Jesus coming in a Hindu Brahmin's dream? Why is he coming in my dream? Why are not my gods and my goddesses coming in and telling me that they would save me? Why are they not reaching out to me when this foreign alien god is trying to reach out to me? And she summed up the gospel to me in one single line. She said, you differentiate Jesus. Jesus does not differentiate anybody. He came for everybody. He loves everybody. Jesus does not differentiate anybody even today. He loves all of us as if today is our last day that he could show his love to. And I was really, really taken aback with this new piece of information that Jesus is going to save me. My mom studied in St. Joseph's Convent. My brother studied in St. Bede's School right from his kindergarten to his 12th grade. My father didn't have the luxury to study in a Christian uh, institution. 
I, I, I started my schooling in alpha matriculation, but when I reached uh, third or fourth, I vehemently refused to go to rosary matriculation. I said, I'm a Hindu, and hence I will study only in a Hindu school. I'm not going to go to a Christian institution. So I didn't know many things that my mom and my brother knew about Jesus. And somehow it didn't feel like I need to go and ask them. I started looking for Christ and ways I could get to know him. I wanted to be very sure that this is indeed the true God and the true Lord. That I will not be cheated again spiritually. Many of us, my dear brothers and sisters, we are cheated, jilted, left at the altar spiritually. We are abused spiritually. We are empty spiritually. There is still this God-spaced hole in each and every one of them. Until we could fill that hole with the right God, whom we were created to adore, honor, praise, glorify, and love with all of our might, mind, and soul. We are going to be empty human beings, incomplete human beings, with incomplete destiny. And my husband had a college friend, a family friend. His name was Mark Alexander. He was a Protestant Christian. He belonged to a church called Churches of South India. It's very much identical to the Catholic Church, but I don't, I wouldn't have known any difference back then. He came and he was very touched by my dream and by my story, which my husband shared to him. And he wanted to come and uh, talk to me. He was a new convert. He was always a Christian, but he met God and he was converted. And he was into evangelization big time. He came and he asked me, would you like to know Jesus? I said, yes, I would like to definitely know if he's the real God. And he offered me, he and Asha, his wife, his family, they offered me to take to church every single Sunday. And around the same period, somebody had given me a rosary and a Catholic Bible. Why I mentioned Catholic Bible is that's the full, complete Bible. If we believe that God has said to Moses, don't take a full stop or a comma away. You need to write exactly all the words that I give you. The other Bibles seem to have uh, seven less books in them. The Catholic Bible has the entire collection of the Word of God. The Holy Text, the Holy Scriptures. They gave me the Catholic book, Catholic Bible. And I, I didn't know how to read the Bible. It, it all seemed to be too huge for me to understand. So I started saying the rosary. They gave me a small book to teach me how to say the rosary. I just loved it. Every time I said the rosary, I could feel the peace of Christ. I could feel peace engulfing me. I was beginning to sleep better. I used to see demons and dark creatures all the time in my dreams. I started having better sleep, at least now and then. I started praying the rosary three times a day, before breakfast, before lunch, before dinner. And I felt I could ask Mother Mary in a very confident way, who's Christ? I knew a mother knows her child much better than anybody else. I started asking Mother Mary to tell me, who is Jesus? The pastors, the Protestant pastors from various different churches, I started marching down to my home, trying to convert me to their church. And when they saw me with the rosary, they would immediately make a face and say, why are you praying to that lady, to that woman? And I would question them, which lady, which woman? Mary, Mary is just like any other woman. And I could see the disrespect they had for God's mother. Who they believed to be God, the son of God the Almighty, the Holy Redeemer, they did not respect his mom. And I did not understand this paradox. And I used to tell them, if you don't respect Mother Mary in your church, how do you respect me? I really need to ask Jesus which church I need to go to. And they would come, they would pray over me. They would uh, teach me, try to teach me the scriptures. I never left praying to the rosary. I never listened to them. 
that I need to stop praying the rosary. I kept continuing to pray the rosary. Around the same time, I was offered to take to uh, to be taken to the, the CSI parish by our family friends. So I started asking Mother Mary, I need to know Jesus. And I asked her four questions, four weeks. The first question was, who's Jesus? Is he really God? Is he really going to be able to forgive all my karma? Whatever that is, I don't know what that is because I never believed in lying. I never believed in cheating. I felt I was living in an honest way. The answer came almost immediately the coming Sunday. The pastor who looked just like our father, our fathers in the church, he was reading something from the Bible. But I could see this huge book that he, he was reading from. And they were, the uh, Mark and Asha family, they were telling me, they were encouraging me to listen uh, more closely to what the Word of God was saying. It was Matthew chapter 9, verse 6. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority in earth to forgive sins. What an amazing word. I was awestruck. God had blessed me to read, given me the grace to read different scriptures in this entire world. None of the God, none of the prophets, none of the so-called gods have ever said, I will forgive your sins. They say they will be able to reduce. They will be able to have mercy. They call us their servants. They call us their slaves. And here I sit and I was listening with my own two ears. Completely lucid. I don't drink. I'm not an alcoholic. I knew what I was hearing. I was absolutely awestruck and amazed. And I immediately asked Mark, is this father, priest, reading something from his own notes and he started laughing and he said, no, this is the word of God. And he taught me how to go back and check. I did. It was there. I knew Jesus was able to forgive my sins. He has the power. He has the authority. And he has an amazing sacred heart. And the love which uses from it day and night for me to forgive my sins. Because I am the child of God. And I do repent truly. The second week started. And I started asking Mother Mary, how do I know that he is my real creator? How do I know that? Whole week I would sit and pray. And whole week I would ask her the same question. And the whole week I would believe I'm going to hear, just like how I heard last week. And I went to Sunday, the following Sunday to his parish. And I sat there with all expectancy and hope in my heart. Is he my real creator? Mama Mary, please. I want to hear the answer. Is he my real creator? I don't want to be cheated again. I don't want to follow something. I want to follow my God. And it was in John chapter 14, verse 12. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these will he do because I am going to the Father. I don't know what Christians understand, Catholics understand. Different people might understand different things. For me, it was extremely clear. He is my father. He is my parent. He is my everything. He did create me because his love for me is greater. Today, I will not walk up to my neighbor's child and say, I want you to do much better than me in life. I want you to buy a better car. I want you to be in a better way. I want you to earn more than me. But I will look at my own child and I will say, I want you to be more happy, more joyous, more healthy, more wealthy. Buy a better car, get a better husband, wife, children, settle down. I felt my father looking at me and saying, my child, I want you to do more greater works than I did because you are my child. And I was just breaking down and I was crying. Tears were just flowing in my face. And everybody got hassled around me. Like, what happened? What happened? What happened? And I couldn't even open my mouth. And after the um, service got over, I told them what I felt. And they started crying with me. 
because they felt it's truly the Holy Spirit which would have given me this interpretation for this reading. The third week came and I started asking Mother Mary, what should I do to be possessed by this God and to possess this God? A relationship is two-way. For me to possess Jesus completely, I need to allow him to possess me. I was asking Mother Mary, what should I do? What should I do? Please tell me. I want to know how I can belong to Jesus so I can I can have everything he's promising me. The third Sunday came and I went to the church completely expecting Jesus to speak to me. Completely waiting to hear what his answer would be. And there was this reading. Unless and until one is baptized, one is reborn again by water and by fire. They will not be able to attend attain the kingdom of heaven which as a hindu person meant salvation to me and in salvation i knew i will live with this god forever and ever and ever i don't have to be reborn seven births god is not that crude god god is not that cruel that he is going to make you pass through this test this examination which he knows very very well that we are too weak to pass with flying colors seven births and the seventh birth will determine whether we are a sinner or we are a holy person if you're a holy person you will be born as cow if you are a person who have sinned a lot you will be born as a donkey that's what hinduism says and i wasn't ready to believe to buy that because by now i had started experiencing the love of god because i went to the source of it mother mary if Jesus came to this world through Mother Mary, I knew God was taking me to him through Mother Mary, my mother and his mother, the one who loved me very much because she loved him very much, the one who was unified with God. And because of that, she knows that we should also be unified with God. And she's praying for each and every one of us night and day because I know she did for me in the very beginning of my conversion. If not for her, I will not be alive. If not for her, I will not be here. If not for her, the world will not know who Mohini was or Christina would be. The fourth Sunday. The entire fourth week, I was quite perplexed. I didn't know why I need to be baptized. I didn't know how I could leave my tradition, my culture, my gods, my goddesses. Will I be disappointing my parents? Will I be disappointing my in-laws? Will my husband be okay? Will my children be okay? So many questions. All these questions were there, not for my reasoning, but for me to find the answer. And I wanted to find every single answer just to belong to this wonderful, mighty God. Because what I saw in his blessed mother was way too beautiful. If a mother who is a human being like you and me, is so beautiful. Then her son, who created this beauty, who is beauty himself, oh my goodness, I needed Jesus. I needed his word to strengthen me. So I told Mother Mary, Mother Mary, I can't get baptized, but I still need Jesus. There should be some other way. Can you please help me? Fourth Sunday came and the reading was crystal clear. If you are ashamed of the Son of Man, the Son of Man will be ashamed of you in front of the Father. I was like, whoa, 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 hold on right there. That, no, 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 that's, that's a dangerous thing. That isn't going to help me at all. I need you, Lord. I'm not, I will not be ashamed of you. I am not ashamed of you. I'm just worried how the society would receive me, my family would receive me. And yet I knew the society or the family were not there to help me in my nightmares, in my emptiness, in my suicidal thoughts, every time Jesus was there. And I decided this is the God. I am going to need him. And when I mentioned this to my husband, my husband was very, very sweet. He said, do whatever it takes for you to become normal, healthy, because I really want the old, older Manju that I was getting married to. I wanted to know more about Jesus. I wanted to know how I can 
attain him completely where should i get baptized so i wanted to take the time and at this particular point i was in kerala i was um, having a shoot there and there was this production manager whom i just shared with that i'm looking for jesus and i would like to get to know him more he pointed out this retreat center which is the largest in asia pota retreat center pota divine retreat center and he said uh, you go there for 5 days and you will know more about christ after my shoot was over i called my husband i said i won't be there until next week i'm going to go attend this retreat bharat had been seeing how i was struggling with everything even with life itself so he said please go get better and come and i went there the first day this beautiful nun was explaining what is the body of christ it became crystal clear to me that i needed to have this god i needed to have this body none of the other religions make makes it so simple but yet very profound the unification of human to the divine if the divine creator could become the human it is only for us human beings to become divine just like him and the church makes it an absolute possibility but yet what a poverty in saying that i'm just doing this in the remembrance of him where jesus' words makes it very clear take this and eat this is my body take and drink this is my blood i was completely flat i was i was completely brought over by this truth and i knew if i go back to my home i needed to go back as someone belonging to christ as someone unified with christ i cannot fight this fight for my, by myself for myself but i needed to fight this with my creator with the almighty power who gets into me and who is going to change my being completely take away all the dirt muck maya clay which i have acquired by my sins by my temptations by the vices by the concupiscences and everything which is nonsensical offered by this world i needed this light to get out of the darkness which was threatening to engulf me totally and completely i went and met the director of the retreat and i explained to him what was going on in my life the suicidal thoughts the depression the nightmares the anxiety and he was quite taken aback father agustin valora everybody thinks actresses and actors leave a uh, lead a quite glamorous life everybody are human beings we want to lead a normal life in saying i am living an extra ordinary life we want ordinary experiences we want ordinary experiences to make us feel comfortable and wanted and loved something was happening in my life which took away everything from me and was threatening every second to take the breath away and father agustin said i will pray about it and attend and he called the uh, santom the basilica in in south of india where i told him that i attend church he asked the priest that she attend church and that priest said yes father lawrence church was a priest he said yes she does attend church whenever she is in town and she really loves our savior she really loves our god and she is really going through something very dangerous in her life and if anyone can be baptized it is she she is ready to receive the lord and he saw that i knew some of my prayers he saw that i really love the lord and he said oh, okay for my baptism and there came a point where i needed to select a name i truly believe that blessed sacrament is jesus and jesus is blessed sacrament i didn't see a priest a human being's hand transforming everything i saw the power of god using the priest's hand to transform everything so i went and i had a chat with my lord and god lord i want to be called by your name in india it's big to be known as someone's daughter or someone's wife shrinivasan is my father's name i could i would either be called as miss shrinivasan this person's daughter i would be or i would be called as mrs bharat this person's wife whichever name was supposed to be my last name i wanted to be known as this wonderful wonderful god's daughter 
someone belonging to him entirely i didn't want anything to do without him i want to be with him always emmanuel and i didn't know which name i should take i got two names that day in the other region christina and christine i chose christine later i was so happy to know there is a saint by my name saint christina who was also a martyr what a blessing to die and to live for this one true love there is no better love in this world and it is the lord other than jesus the next day morning i was baptized with the name christina and i started going to church i started receiving christ what a joy what a moment of this hope of my salvation the nightmares and everything continued but i wasn't bothered i knew there was someone else who's going to fight all my fights and i'm just going to be still and know that he is my god the battle belongs to the lord and i had gone to i had gone back i had resumed my work i received an award at that time for best actress when i went to receive my award um, three nights continuously i had dreams a lot of dead people coming and asking me to be freed i didn't understand so i would just wake up in the middle of the night kneel down and say jesus there are these dead people coming and asking me that they want to be freed can you please free them in jesus name amen and i would go back to sleep the third night i heard this beautiful voice which touched my soul which shook my soul the voice of the lord the voice of the shepherd we are his sheep and we will know his voice and i did know it was his voice the voice which commanded me to live the voice which commanded me to be his creature the voice which still commands me to be healed and walk in front of him and be holy he said christina go and ask saint anthony uh, go and ask anthony to pray for you and even today i keep thinking was it saint anthony or this protestant pastor anthony i didn't know but i went and asked pastor anthony who was a catholic convert into protestantism to come and pray over me I didn't know anything about deliverance I didn't know anything about exorcism I didn't know anything about praying over he came home and he said uh, he was very happy to pray over me I was I was able to listen to what I was talking but I was not able to control I knew that I was moving in a very weird way in circles but I was not able to control I knew there was a voice talking from within me but it was not my voice the slang was not mine I didn't know that particular slang in in my mother tongue that day 13 evil spirits left me and every one of them said she has gone to the most high god she is the daughter of the most high god and hence we cannot be in her release us command us to go in the name of the son only then we cannot come back that idiotic magician the the witch or the wudu guy whoever that is he does not understand that this woman cannot be harmed anymore and they said our beings are in fire we cannot harm this girl anymore we cannot kill her anymore we cannot make her kill herself anymore we are leaving we just cannot be here i was able to hear crystal clear every single statement of every one of those evil spirits and i was in awe it's like saying my heart knew this is a perfect guy for me and thank god i'm married to him thank god i didn't lose him thank god i didn't let him go that was a moment for me towards jesus the christ thank god i was married to him thank god i did not let him go thank god i knew in my heart that this is who i should belong to because everything needs to belong to him to have its life and existence i was completely freed from my spondylosis from my arthritis i always tell my prayer ministers i am a deliverance prayer minister today i was trained by the catholic church to pray over people when people come to us and say they have been prayed over by protestant pastors and protestant ministers we do who see it lacks something we do see the deliverance is not complete we do see that there is something which is still going on the door is not completely shut to the evil yet because it was my experience when the protestant pastor prayed over me i had to come to the catholic church 
and in the holy mass i was declared as healed in 400 people the pastor who didn't know the priest the father who did not know what i was going through would announce my name and say jesus has healed you from your spondylosis jesus has healed you from your arthritis and those left me that day and it has been 14 years since then no pain and years later there had to be another catholic deliverance prayer minister who came and completed this for me even though i was healed i would still have nightmares now and then i would still feel very queasy now and then i was falling sick now and then and when this catholic deliverance minister prayed over me i was completely healed i knew that the entirety of truth only can set you free in its entirety and i was completely freed today i am a free woman in christ today today i am a warrior in christ today i am successful in christ today i am victorious in christ and i know my journey is towards christ and his kingdom mother mary is there with me i am a dominican today i am a happy proud grateful servant girl of my mistress mother mary who is also my blessed mother who is also my queen who fights for me who pleads for me who prays for me who covers me with a holy veil of protection every single day and night who is a seat of wisdom who gives me wisdom what to pray when to pray how to pray how to help people the catholic church nourishes my soul every single day i run to see my lord i run to receive my lord in the eucharist because i know he is waiting for me and he does not fail to nourish me to supply all my needs to provide for all my needs for i am a citizen of heaven and not of earth and i talk about my testimony because i want people to know there is help there is freedom there is healing there is hope there is this absolute person who loves you head to toe whoever you are wherever you are whatever you are doing however you are my sins are separated from me from east to west i was crimson red but i made white as snow because jesus loves me tomorrow will be the same day after will be the same all the days of my life i know my cup will run over i know i will be anointed because jesus loves me and i want this message to reach wherever whenever however possible that every single person will know because they should know that they are not alone shoulder to shoulder we are standing with christ we are united in soul spirit body and mind it is our self will which we need to exercise to live this life of heavenliness on earth the holy spirit will help us in each and every step of the way i was supposed to be divorced now i am not divorced they said i will never be able to have a second child i have a second son they said i will miscarry him he was full term they said he will be a c section baby he was normal delivery they said something is wrong with his lungs because he had swallowed meconium so 48 hours he need to be in the icu i told the lord lord no i can give you 10% of it i need my son to be here because you had carried everything in the cross so this shall not affect him within 2 hours my baby was back to me he was not able to speak until he was 3 and a half years old i ran to mother mary and i said you are a mother i am a mother jesus is not listening to me he will listen to you i don't know if you will bring him by his hand or by his ears i want my son to speak seventh day he started speaking every single step of the way i have the holy family which accompanies me which prays for me which fights all my fights and i live in christ i live for Christ because Christ died for me i thank you so much for allowing me to share this great love story between a king and a beggar between the most magnificent lord and god and the poorest of poor creatures of his praise god christina uh thank you so much uh, for telling your story what a powerful witness uh, to the work of god and the holy spirit 
Amen. Yeah, thank you so Sorry. much for sharing that with us. That was really beautiful. Thank you. Thanks again, Christina, for your witness, especially to, and we've seen it with many others, conversion story to Christ's relentless search and prevenient call on the soul. As he says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and your fruit should last. And so we thank God for having chosen and sought after you, Christina. We will pray that your witness will bear abundant fruit and all of those who have now heard your story all those who will in the future hear your story. And this is St. Catholic. My name is Austin Habish with Claire Nowak and special guest Christina Srinivasan. And thanks again for joining us.